I am mining investor and editor of Resource Stock Digest, Gerardo Del Real here with my partner, Mr. Nick Hodge, who of course is also an investor, a pretty damn good one too, and the publisher of Daily Profit Cycle. This is the 277th episode of our weekly therapy session that we call Investing in Bizarro World. We're back at it, talking markets, talking about what we're investing in, and some of the craziness that goes on around us seemingly 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We're going to get into all of that, but first and foremost, Senor Hodge, how goes you? We took a week off. Feels good to be back. I missed this last week. I hope you had a great 4th of July with your beautiful family. How are things? I wish the same for you. It was good to take a, a, a week off, although I do enjoy doing this, but um, hadn't seen my family in 18 months, uh, and that includes a 15-month-old niece that my wife and kids hadn't met. So uh, we had all six grandchildren together, uh, my parents, uh, my sister, and brother-in-law, and we had a great time for a week. So it was good. It was relaxing. Uh, got to spend a lot of time with nieces and nephews, and ready to get back to it. Um, the craziness is the craziness. Can't help but mention the fourth turning right here at the top. Um, as the, the election uh, gets crazy, as gold goes to, to 2,400, and um, as you know, the, the, the bizarreness of the world continues to play out. So good to be back here and undocumented and, and happy to talk about things with you. You know, I'm, I'm wearing my Cubs jersey. Everybody knows I'm a faithful, loyal Cubs fan, have been since 1984 when my family moved to Chicago. And I couldn't help but think when I put this jersey on today, the Cubs are like the junior resource space, right? And so this season is a perfect example of that. We started the season in first place looking like absolutely playoff bound, had a damn good chance of winning the National League title. We then go on a slump. We get all the big injuries. We're getting hurt. Everything that could go wrong went wrong for a month and a half. And we were sitting in last place and just like the junior resource space, right? What do we do? We win five of the last six, including the last two against your very good team, the Baltimore Orioles. So and now, yeah. And so now we look like if we can continue to go strong into the break, we might be able to, 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 to get it together and have a strong second half of the season and contend. I say all that to say that the junior resource market is a lot like that. Every time you kind of want to look at it and go, you know what, why the fuck do I do this? You put, you pull off a Patriot, right? And yeah, no Patriots pulled back. The Patriot's going to be just fine. You pull off a Patriot. You pull off a Bravo from 50 cents to five bucks. Um, you pull off, you know, a few of the other wins that we've had that make it worthwhile. Um, and, and it just drags you back in. And of course, everyone knows that that, that I think we have the next one of those that, that, that may surpass the performance of all of those stocks, right? And, and that, of course, being, uh, I'll, I'll say it, this will be your freebie, that being hand in metals, which it's, 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 look, substantial part of my my net worth right now and i am overweight by a whole hell of a lot i like to take big swigs i put my mouth where my mouth i put my money where my mouth is and um i i, I think hannon's going to be the best exploration story of the next several years but i say that to say that when you look around and i see gold surging we talked a couple of weeks ago about gold looking boring but beautiful technically silver looking boring but beautiful technically Every time you're ready to kind of give up and, and, and not be a gold bug, despite the fact that we all know the reason and the fundamentals that, that support it, you get a run like today where, you know, we get a weaker than expected, not by a lot, I should add, CPI number. And all of a sudden, ta-da, Jerome's pulling the scissors out and we can expect a rate hike, a rate cut probably in September, according to the betting odds. The betting odds saying 90% chance of a September rate cut now. So, the markets reacted. Look, gold set, it hit a high of 24.20, silver up a couple of percent at 31.36. Copper is back up to 4.38. Oil is up to 83, and the dollar is breaking down. The last time we chatted, we were looking to see if it held that 106 level. It's back down closer to 104 than it is 106. So a lot going on that's really supportive of the space that I dabble on dabble in exclusively and a space that I know you're heavily overweight on that being junior resource stocks and mining stocks a lot there. I'll let you go one at a time. How's gold looking to you today? Oh man. Um, I, yeah, I'm not sure what you want to talk about. It was up 40 bucks on exactly what you said. The word that we're now, um, you know, going to price in, uh, basically a, a, a shoe in chance of a, a rate cut at the September meeting. So gold was already bullish, um, had lots of things in its favor that we've documented here and, and, and in our newsletters. 
you know, federal uh, central bank buy, Chinese retail buying, geopolitical uh, wars and, and instability. Um, and uh, an interest rate cut would uh, only be, you know, uh, some gravy on top of that. Obviously, gold does better yeah. in, a, in a lower interest rate environment. Um, and there's a couple of other things that maybe aren't getting as widely talked about. The dollar is, is one of them that you mentioned. Um, yeah, the bond yields, uh, the 10-year yield slowing down, maybe not because of uh, this coming rate cut, but because of a, of a slowing U.S. economy. The other thing that's happened is, uh, you know, Q2 GDP forecasts have um, contracted here in, in the past couple of weeks. And then, um, you know, that chance for slowing growth is is something that is typically good for gold uncertainty etc and then uh, the last thing is is gold volatility which is the mm. lowest it's been um really since uh gold went to twenty four hundred dollars the first time and so um in terms of capital flows and and where capital wants to go to be treated best it's in things that have low volatility we you know we know that there's been low volatility in the market via the vix and the s p and the S and P's hit over thirty all time, you know, record highs this year, um, and now you've got gold and then to a certain extent oil with with low volatility, and you're starting to see capital come into those spaces. So those are looking good. Worth mentioning the stocks. You know, I, I said it a couple of weeks ago how I continued to hear about how um, you know mining is a, is a tough market and it, and it's tough out there. But both the GDX and the GDXJ hit fifty two week highs today, so um, they are starting to get the message that this is gonna. Um, I think be a, a sustained, you know, bull market for precious metals. And um, then you have to talk about, you know, earnings, I think, which hopefully surprise to the upside when the producers start, um, you know, <laughs> unveiling their, 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 their quarterly numbers. And so, you know, <clears throat> thinking how that's going to play out, hopefully attracting, you know, that generalist crowd that we've been waiting for once we start actually, you know, printing profitable quarters with these higher metals prices. So, uh, the unanswered question is, when does money come into the junior space? Uh, but I think you're starting to see that. You know, I see some stocks with big gold resources in the ground that, that were moving today. I saw lots of stocks, to your point, about how quickly things change. You know, stocks that have been down 10, 20 percent in a day, up 10, 20, 30 yep. percent um, in a day, as well as these metal prices, you know, get going. So just some initial thoughts there, I guess, on, on precious metals. I, I, I like the initial thoughts. Um I'm a little peeved at myself because I had a great, um, <laughs> a great silver trade, a pure silver trade with a new gold discovery that I was going to pull the trigger on last week when silver bounced below 30 and uh, got busy, didn't pull the trigger on. And the next day, you know, silver surged another two, three percent and the stock was up some 15, 20 percent. So got to be uh, a little nimbler on the trigger in these markets. And I guess that gets to my next point, folks. We are at that stage where I think it's go going to stop being boring. We talked about what a beautiful, boring gold chart it looked like two weeks ago. I think the boring part is likely behind us. I think the silver move is real. I think copper is right behind it. And I think uranium is done um, bottoming and is ready to turn back. Uh, I also think some of the lithium equities are going to start slowly but surely regaining their footing. And I want to remind everybody something that Ken Brinson, uh, the chairman and CEO of Patriot Battery Metals, said recently in a presentation, um, he expects lithium prices to double from current levels in pretty short order. And he's, you know, he's, he's pretty adamant about the fact that he he heard all the same things um, that that are being said about Patriot and the lithium space um, during the last cycle with Pilbara, right? When it was a, a 20 cent stock and everybody was saying, you guys are in the wrong business, you're in the wrong industry, the fundamentals no longer support higher lithium prices. He said, I was right then, I was right when, when, when things were high up and I told you it had to pull back that happened and he's like i'm telling you right now the lithium price will be nearly a double of what it is today in very very short order and if that's the case look all these lithium equities whether you're an albemarle or a patriot battery metals doesn't matter where you are on the food chain they're all waiting for better lithium sentiment and there's a ton of shorts in there once the shorts see that the feast is over no they'll, they'll get back in there and provide the support that shorts always provide when they exit and that'll be welcomed with and paired and coupled with buying of people that are on the sidelines and going, and look, e even me, as much lithium exposure as I have, I, I, I haven't added any new lithium exposure in the past couple of months because I'm happy and content for the next part of the cycle with what I have, right? I've been doubling down on my copper position and in Hannon, Hannon's case, tripling down on my, my Hannon position and then now hugely overweight Hannon and copper. So I say all that to say, I think the boring part is over. I know it's summer doldrums, 
stocks are catching a bit. You mentioned 52 week highs for a couple of those indexes. I think it's going to start trickling down. I had a friend reach out about a week and a half ago and she asked me, you know, do do I own the right stocks? And so I, I, I took a look at her at her list and I said, well, you know, these three I don't worry about. They have robust assets. They're anchored um, by, by a robust project, great management team. They're cashed up. Ride the cycle out. You'll be fine on these three. I said these bottom three will likely do well and catch a bit and maybe even outperform the top three on a percentage basis, but that's not going to happen until the exciting part of the cycle kicks in, right? And of course, they were early stage exploration plays with two, three, four, five million dollar market caps, you know, the, 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 the kind of stocks that require a discovery in these markets or a better market to get to 20, 25, 30 million dollar market cap, which is a quick five, six fold hit. And, and so I said, you're just not at that part of the cycle yet. We're not at that part of the cycle yet, but I think we're getting closer to starting to see that turn a bit more. Yeah, I, I don't worry about the the long term in the in the metal space, right? In fact, I, I grow more comfortable with it as I see things uh, evolve in the world. Whether that's, um, I don't know, we had a, a bipartisan bill just signed on, on the nuclear energy front, right? It's starting to become apparent that we're not going to be able to to meet these climate goals, AI ambitions without the the use of of nuclear energy, and then the government is is finally getting the message on on that front. Um, it, what else? You know, Canada just said that they don't want foreign firms buying, you know, uh, out assets that are maybe not just in Canada, but even listed in Canada, <clears throat> according to some of the interpretations that I that I've read. And so, yeah, um, global governments are are starting to get serious and and worried about you know where the future um, sources of, of minerals are going to come from. And and in that respect, I've always been pretty confident about the, the future of the, the metal space. It, the question has always been when, right? We've always wondered when, um, it, it, to a certain extent, uh, I'm going to tie it back to, you know, it, why we do this podcast and, and, and why we called it bizarro world. Right. I, I look at sort of the news cycle and, and I think about that fourth <laughs> turning and I think a lot about fakeness. We, I did some presentations about things that were fake and how society had been fake for such a long time. And what I've seen in the past, I don't know, three months or so, certainly in the past couple of weeks is, you know, people coming out and admitting to reality, right? Whether that's, oh, that guy does not make sense when he talks, or, you know, maybe he's not the the best person that we could have out there running for president, as opposed to obfuscating or, or towing the line or, you know, uh, otherwise contriving some reality that isn't real, right? Uh, and I, I think that is going to transpire or, you know, spill over and into the investment world as well. You talk about things that you can drop on your foot. Having value is a, is a line you hear a lot, right? Things that are real. And uh, with all the the fakeness and, and in all this inauthenticity out there, I see a bit coming back to these things that um, are real and that you do need to create real value and, and products in the world. And so, yeah, there's a reason that gold is 30, er, silver is $31 the ounce and then copper is now, you know, 450 the pound, for example. And um, I think that there's upside as well. And and the technicals and then the fundamentals are confirming that for me, you know, the copper's pulled back n- nicely to 450 and has shown support there. And looks like it wants to level out and retest five. You were saying that it wouldn't be far behind gold and silver. And I agree. So um not sure how to wrap that up, but um, have been profiting in multiple ways from, from these metals companies. You know, we, we sold Contango today, for example, and it hit a, a limit sell order that we've had on a quick 20% on a, you know, company that just went into production on July 8th with a, a, a new mine in Alaska. So um, we're out there making money. We're, we're rinsing it and repeating as the shampoo bottle says, and, and we'll continue doing that. Yeah. And, and look, talking about um, metals and, you know, we've talked a lot on this podcast about the premium that I think, you know, North American and friendly jurisdictions, uh, companies that, that companies and assets, the premium that they're going to garner. Right. And and look, the government's putting real money behind that. Uh, the Biden administration, for all its sleepiness, just granted nearly one point one billion dollar in grants to convert existing plants to build electrical vehicles and the components. Um, on, on the uranium side, there was just a piece of legislation uh, that was signed that, you know, fast tracks the permitting for a lot of nuclear plants, specifically the, the the small modular reactors, right? So there's an emphasis there. There's a couple of billion dollars that um, the DOE recently here in the U.S. set aside 
to buy enriched uranium from friendly sources. And I think around the world, there is a realization that this, this Cold War with China is soon to be not so much behind the scenes and economic in nature, but very much front of the line and, and very much in everyone's face. And I think I think that's why you're seeing the allocation of capital and you're seeing the emphasis. You talk fourth turning, I, I have to go here. Um, <laughs> we're out of time. Okay, well, let me ask you a hypothetical question, Nick. Why do you think now, finally, people are starting to value authenticity and are starting to call a blue sky a blue sky now? Why do you think it's happening now? I mean, that's a really big question. So in terms of the book, I think you've had an, enough people in my and your generation that are at the point where they're, I think this has to do with the, the family and, and raising kids to a certain extent. They're at the point now, and I was telling my family this while they were here, and, and I was putting it in terms of the things that the local government had been spending money on. And I was saying, like, the, the, the time for partisanship is done. Like, I was using the example, um, we have this... Um, pride mural here in Spokane that is uh, a rainbow painted on the uh, at the crosswalk or something and that's great it's wonderful I love rainbows and gay people sure. I love all that and then sure. somebody was peeling wheel on it right so um I'm gonna sneeze sorry <clears throat> somebody was peeling wheel on it and it became this whole debacle right you can imagine uh, the people on the, the yeah. left and the people peeling wheel on the right and how it became this whole thing about rights and gender sure. and gays and it, it people that I talked to like were like who gives a who gives a fuck about either side, right? Like, be gay or don't like gays, but stop spending my tax money on putting cameras around this dumb intersection, and let's stop talking about it and move on. Why? Because we've got families to fucking raise, and we don't care about your camera and your intersection, right? Like, and yep. so that's what the fourth turning is about. Like, things become more important than all this stuff on the periphery that hasn't been working for anybody, and you've got to get back to brass tacks. So, um, I think that's what it is. I think that people are finally saying, "Look, I can't." do any more taxes somebody was saying to me the other day you know we fought a revolution over like a one and a half percent increase in the in the fucking tax on tea and look where we're at with the taxes in this nation now so look it's breaking the back of people that are even making a couple of hundred thousand dollars uh, a year in terms of rising property costs and taxes and they're nickel and diamond you now is uh, back to a spokane example now they want to add a 0.1 a, a percent sales tax in spokane proper to as a uh, a public safety fee or something like a public safety tax. We're, we have 9% sales tax here. We're at 9%. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they just implemented a, a capital gains tax in the state that's constitution says you're not supposed to have an income tax. A couple of years ago, they impl implemented a long-term care tax on everybody's paycheck. That's some point decimal, you know, a fraction of your every paycheck that you got a long-term care tax. They're nickel and diving you now to the point where it, people in my generation that ha had young kids are, are saying that's enough. And so anyway, it, people like you and I have seen this for a long time. I've been wondering like when the fuck everyone else was going to say, yeah, like these guys aren't it, man. And so I see that happening more and more now where people are like, yeah, it's not really about the partisanship. It's about like getting real solutions done and having real conversations and not like whatever, towing the line or, or just being a partisan hack. Yeah, I'll give you my answers because the shit is hitting the fan and now is the part of the turning where accountability is going to be at the forefront, meaning it's going, it's hitting the fan and whoever is in power is going to get the blame and they're starting to realize that. And I think it's why we're four months away. Think about this. We're four months away from the presidential election here in the US. Half of the Republicans don't like the Republican candidate prominent ones, not just the behind the scenes ones, prominent ones. Three quarters, if not 90% of the Democrats don't like Biden as the candidate. Yeah, George Clooney, and I love George Clooney's movies. And look, George Clooney's got one of the best dating rosters that I've seen um, outside of Derek Jeter and a lot of respect on that front, right? Because he's consistent with the beautiful woman and found himself an amazing one to marry. Back to my point on George Clooney, 30 days ago, he threw a, pro a fundraiser for Joe Biden. And just yesterday, he comes out and says, I know I told you guys this was the guy. I fucked that up. I'm sorry. This is not the guy. Like, love the guy. Respect the guy. The guy, the, the guy's done some good. He's got some legislation that's done some good. We're in serious fucking times. Can we get some serious adults in the fucking race, right? 
And excuse the profanity, I'll normally give you all the heads up, apologies in advance. But this isn't the time to be worried about profanity. This isn't the time to be partisan. This isn't the time to worry about, you know, the 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 the, the coliseum of distractions that they've provided for us over the last several years. This is a time where the Fed is once again about to cut rates. And who that benefits is, it's the Nick Hodges of the world. It's the Mies the of the world. It's our, it's our sure. mentors of the world. It is the asset owners. So you think wealth inequality is bad now? Wait till they're done with this cycle of rate cuts. It is going to be disgusting, nasty work where the simple-minded people like me are making stupid amounts of money off of a couple of simple ideas and very intelligent, bright, hardworking people that want to contribute to our country and economy are being buried and forced to live together because there's no way they're going to be able, nor will they want to, own their own home or start their own business because the permitting and the taxation and the cost of being able to do that are going to be, it's going to be so high that it just doesn't pencil. And we're starting to see that now. It's going to get a lot worse after this next cycle of rate cuts that's coming up. And, and you know, I, I've thrown my rants on here on, on, on the Federal Reserve and how criminal I think it is. It, it, it's happening again, y'all. It's all I can do. My little simple brain give you some simple ideas and things that I think are going to do really well in the cycle. And hopefully some of y'all are able to make some money with that. It's not an overnight solution to things, but Hey, look, you pull enough capital together, enough friends together. You work as a unit. You quit looking at all the differences and start looking at some of the similarities and dodge the distractions. And you, you can make some money in the cycle that's coming in. It, it not the time as Keith McCullough says, this is not a day to do nothing. This is not a time to do nothing. You're going to have to be a, a whole hell of a lot more proactive in your everyday life and every aspect of it, or they're going to run over you, y'all. Yeah, I mean, the, the last five to 10 years weren't a time to do nothing. That was the the quote-unquote unraveling as, you know, coined by the authors of the the fourth turning. If you were able to identify it unraveling, you know, you could have taken some preventative or preemptive measures to, to put yourself in a better place. And again, we've been chronicling those uh, and writing about those uh, that's found in the old newsletter division based on that, you know, some 11 years ago. So, you know, we've seen the writing on the wall and, and now we're entering the point where you say it, it's it's not time to do nothing. Um, not all very interesting, of course. So what else do you want to talk about? Uh, what else do I want to talk about? I want to talk about fucking center point energy. That's what I want to talk about. Dear <laughs> I saw at, some stories. Dear at center point energy. This is the United States of America. We live in the great state of Texas. The people of Houston and the people in Texas do not deserve to be without air conditioning for three and a half days after a predicted storm that you were told was coming your way hit Houston. There's there's still over a million and a half residents, residents, it's more people, residences that are without power three and a half days later. It is absolutely inexcusable in a state as wealthy as Texas. And again, this is why it's hitting the fan. You have the governor pointing the finger at Joe Biden and the Democrats. The Democrats going, you repeatedly run on a platform that says you don't need us, want us, or or, or, or want us meddling in state politics. The state motto is don't mess with Texas. And you, we've told you. For your that yeah, your grid should be a part of the United States grid, whether you agree with that or not. There are options. You upgrade your damn grid so that it's livable, workable, and functioning at a basic level during a storm. Or you join the national grid and you accept the help of the Fed. You can't have it both ways. And this is not a partisan ranting. So ranting specifically on center point. I don't know if the gentleman or lady that run that place, a Democrat, a libertarian, a Republican, I don't care. I know there's over a million people right now sitting in Houston without power, boiling their asses off, quite literally, probably, in a lot of cases, boiling their asses off. It's inexcusable in 2024. It's inexcusable to me. That's a publicly traded company and and, and one of the larger utilities in the country. It's an $18.9 billion market cap company. I was just looking up here. Um, I'm not a Texan and, and I wasn't there. So, you know, obviously best wishes to everyone who's dealing with the flooding. I, I do have a, an aunt and uncle there who recently moved and my in-laws are moving there. But I saw some things like um, they weren't even able to track which neighborhoods were out. They were using some like burger what app a burger. to track. 
Yeah, They're using tr- the local fucking burger joint to track the outages because when you go to the Centerpoint app, that's down as well. They couldn't keep their app running. That's crazy. And has the stock taken a hit? Yeah, it's down from 31 to, to 29. But yeah, no, I mean, that's that's sort of what I mean by the simple solutions, right? You take all that federal and grid stuff and throw it out the window. It's like you need a solution that works, right? You need a, a grid that doesn't freeze because Texas goes to, to 32 now, uh, apparently. And you, you guys have hurricanes being on... Uh, you know, the golf there with, with Houston and Galveston. So, um, yeah, at some point that, that tit for tat, don't mess with me. I'm right. And you're left. It's like, yeah, but I, excuse me, I need air conditioning, right? Like, hello. <laughs> and so, um, that's what, that's what I was saying where it's like that, that partisan stuff has to go away and you got to focus on the actual solutions because telling Washington to go up themselves and whatever, running on your, and he's not even there, right? Isn't he like raising money in Korea or something, Mr. Abbott? Yeah, he's not even in the states. So anyway, yeah, things gonna things gonna change. Things be changing. But worry not, people. The hot to a squirter, the perfect toy to beat the summer heat, is out now. <laughs> so much capitalization, monetize, monetize, monetize. Sweet baby Jesus. Um, what what do you like out there, Nick? What do you what are you watching? Man, um, I just wrote my monthly issue for Foundational Profits, so let me plug that. Um, we were talking that uh, interest rates were going down. Um, one of the, the sectors we've been in in Foundational Profits since January, anticipating a, a rate cut in late 2024, was utilities. And that's been one of the, the worst sectors of the S&P for some time. But if you look at the chart uh, or the, the sector breakdown in the S&P over the last month or so, utilities have started to to perk up quite nicely. And that's because they're a rate sensitive industry. So if we are going to get this rate cut in September, that um, utilities are one place to look at. And then we front ran that a little bit and did well. Uh, but I spent some time looking at REITs in the in the July issue because REITs are another um, a rate sensitive issue. And I, in fact, was talking about Houston a little bit because of those giant neighborhoods and, and, and sort of retiring boomers and things like that. So uh, anyway, REITs have also been one of the worst performing sectors of the S&P over the past five years. And um, a higher interest rate environment hasn't helped the, them. So if you're interested in that sort of long term, um, you know, capital navigation and, and, and retirement positioning, that's sort of what I was writing about this week at length in the, the July issue of Foundational Profits. What about you? Um. Got to congratulate Jordan Trimble and Sky Harbor Resources. Uh, Jordan has been, you know, drilling. It seems like forever. I told him this earlier when I interviewed him earlier today. He's been drilling in the hopes of a high-grade discovery of significance for a long, long time. And it's early. It's one hole. There's assays pending for several more. But it looks like he's on to something that could turn into something pretty significant. At a great 20-minute uh, interview earlier that we could have turned into a uranium podcast, frankly, on the discovery, right? Um, but he outlined why he's excited. He outlined a lot of the technical aspects of it. And I'm excited to see if they follow that up with good, solid, continuous mineralization um, of the kind of grades that they were able to get into, which, you know, it's up to 3% U308 at the newly identified fork zone that of course is at the co-flagship Russell project. It went ahead and drilled 7.30% U308 over three meters um, at the high grade Moore project as well. A couple of days later. So a heck of a week for the sky Harbor team. Um, it comes uh, during a week where, you know, president Biden finally signed bipartisan. God, I love saying that word, right? Bipartisan legislation. Um, that expedites and streamlines the permitting, as I mentioned earlier, for uh, uh, nuclear here in the U.S. I expect something like that along the lines in the lithium space. Um, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Congrats to him. Congrats to Mark Saxon of T2 Metals. Did a brilliant job of bringing in a cornerstone investor for that stock. Good, sticky, long-term um shareholders that have a great European base and influence. And look, he's got a robust base metal resource already in place, anchoring the valuation of that company. And he's on to but potentially could be an exciting high-grade gold discovery to go with it, along with some really prospective copper projects. He's been one of the hardest working people behind the scenes. And as it all gone the way that he thought it would go, when it went, 
but looks like that ship is now sailing in the right direction and excited to see what they're able to deliver. And then the usual suspects, right? I'm looking at Patriot. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for more results from that new high-grade Vega zone. Everything there looks beautiful. They're looking really intelligent right now for cashing up when they cashed up, despite the criticism that they received at the time that they did it. They did it at a significant premium. And guess what? They could write out the next two years, regardless of what Lithium does. And Bravo. Bravo is on to a high-grade discovery as well. So it's not bang for your buck. I told you, Hannon's um, my number one pick right now. I told you I still love Patriot. Uh, TT T2 looks good. TTs look good too, but T2 looks good. Um, and yeah, there, there's lots of stuff out there to look at. Um, any, anything stock-wise specifically for you? Well, I was going to comment on a couple of those things there, um, it, which are you know close to, to me and my portfolio. I've uh, been a shareholder of Sky Harbor for some time. Uh, have recently re-recommended it in the, in the open market. And so good to see a new discovery at the at the russell project as you said um some assay is still outstanding and, and they'll get back to work there uh, fully funded in short order two things i wanted to, to point out or maybe uh, ask you about the first i'd ask you about uh, there there'll be other news from sky harbor over the summer from partner funded programs so that's one thing to add on top and then the other thing um i saw in the press release was you know one of those holes at more had like 10 percent nickel as well over like a, a short little interval so that was buried down in there, but that was interesting to me. So anyway, I read the press releases and uh, I am a biased Sky Harbor shareholder. And T2 was well said. Um, you know, they didn't get to drill Arizona and, and Nevada didn't quite go the way they wanted. And I was a shareholder, wrote a check and pivoted, not pivoted. They always had the the Sheridan assets in, in Manitoba. But like you said, have now been able to, to raise money and bring in some key shareholders. Um, and, and I think they will have success as well. So not only did he do a good job uh, raising money, uh, but obviously this speaks to you know why share structure matters. Like he's got uh, warrants at thirty cents that are likely going to be in the money by the time they expire in October. So, uh, chance for some more money to come into the treasury, including mine. So, um, yeah, two good callouts there. No, I'm not going to give you any more freebies. Um, in fact, I, I was still telling you we're thinking about you know taking this podcast private or where funding secured, as uh, Elon Musk once said. To, take this off the um, free YouTubes and, and put it behind a paywall. I couldn't help but notice that in our week of absence, the the last podcast about uranium got over 500 views. And, you know, as you said, we've done really well in the resource space, finding, you know, one of the most world-class or globally significant uh, lithium assets in, in recent memory and, and, and making a hundred times our, our money on that. Uh, several, several others, you know, uh, over the course of, of 10 years, we were talking about in that uh, uranium podcast a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I think I still have it here. I was at, you know, Patterson Lake South over uh, a decade ago. And, and by the way, that stock broke out to, to 52 week highs in the, in the two weeks since we were talking about this uh, takeout bid from Paladin. So anyway, yep. um, don't expect this podcast to, to remain free forever. Uh, all good things must uh, come to an end. And uh, things change, but that's not a formal announcement. Just to say, you get a lot of value from this. You said you get your money worth it, and of course you do because it's free. So, um, some of the insights that we provide here are very supplemental to the things that we do uh, behind a paywall, and uh, might want to keep some of that reserved in the future. So, uh, stay tuned. Agreed. And and I'll add this um, for our paying subscribers at you know Digest Publishing. Those of you that pay uh, for the research and and, and our thoughts. Um, it's kind of a way, a very tangible way to say thank you to you all. At the very least, you definitely deserve to have it first, to hear our thoughts first, um, to hear what we're watching and looking for first, especially given that a lot of the stocks that we talk about here are stocks that we also cover in those letters. So at the very least, it's a thank you to them. I don't want um, subscribers and viewers of this to feel like we're locking them out because we don't appreciate them. We just believe, you know, there's there's value there. Um, that 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 you know we should prioritize and 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 there's an order to everything. So we'll see how that goes. We'd love to hear your feedback on what you think the direction of the podcast should be. As far as you know, would you like it three days after? Would you like snippets of it? Would you like um, to pay for it? Would you like to pay for it? <laughs> what, what would you be willing to pay for it? Um, maybe you think we should pay you to listen to it. Who knows, right? But. Regardless, um, leave a comment. We, we'd love to hear your thoughts. And um, also, don't forget to go to dailyprofitcycle.com 
forward slash subscribe. Ton of free content on there. Thoughts, editorials on all things crypto, tech, resource stocks, you name it. So there's tons of free content everywhere. You can go to Resource Stock Digest. Sponsors pay for their companies to get on there and for us to help tell their story. We vet the companies. We think it's companies that have a realistic chance of making it happen. You know the industry. It's high risk, high reward. Not all of them work. Most of them don't. But there's a lot of really good companies on there. They wouldn't be on there if we didn't think they had a decent chance at helping make you some money. That is completely free to you all. And you get almost a daily dose of fresh content interviews and uh, thoughts from CEOs, newsletter writers, uh, financiers, you name it. So plenty of free content to go around, folks. I hope everyone has a phenomenal, phenomenal week. Any words of wisdom to send us off with, Mr. Hodge? Stay cool out there. It's seemingly 95 degrees um, in every state of the union. So um, whether you're in Houston or not, put your um, hat on and hopefully have some air conditioning. I don't own hand in metals. I don't know what to tell you. I'll just leave it there. <laughs> have a good one, everybody. I am Gerardo Del Real along with Mr. Nick Hodge. This was the 277th episode of our weekly therapy session that we call Investing in Bizarro World. It was great to be back. Y'all have a great one out there. Make it count. See you later. Hey there, you independent-minded investor. If you like this video, make sure to tell us so by clicking the like button below. Subscribe to our channel so you never miss another one. And share it with everyone you know on social media. You can also click the link in the description below to check out more information-packed videos just like this one. Thanks for watching.